when and, and what company we, we ultimately end up merging with, and I, I really can't uh, give you information about that. But what I can say is when we took these entities public, you know, our proposition was if we could create the most investor-friendly SPAC in the world, uh, we could recruit uh, the best investors in the world or some of the best well-known investors in the world. Uh, and we could also, and if we create the most merger-friendly structure in the world, we could find an extremely attractive company that would want to go public um, by merging with us. And uh, you can now see a 13F list of our investors. Um, you can form your own view on the ones that have to file 13Fs, um, but there are many uh, extraordinary investors that don't file 13Fs, including sovereign wealth funds that own less than 5% of PSTH and, uh, you know, a large number, you know, in the dozens of family offices globally, uh, billionaire family offices that have uh, that bought stakes in the IPO, uh, and we think uh, this shareholder list uh, will be and is uh, actually uh, will be an asset for us in finding a uh, potential target. You know, in terms of timing, what we said at the time of the IPO is we said it would take us, we thought, about six months to identify a target uh, that we would in a position to hopefully announce a deal by sometime in Q1 and then close a transaction, uh, you know, in the ordinary course thereafter. Um, you know, nothing that we have uh, experienced to date uh, suggests that we won't, uh, you know, meet our expected uh, time frame. Uh, so with that, uh, let me go to uh, a few other topics. One, uh, the hedge. Um, we obviously had a very large hedge 